All right, welcome everybody. Thanks for coming out to the uh, sunrise sessions. There's way more people in here than I expected, actually. Um, so Zoe and I are going to talk to you a bit about um, image management using Python. Uh, I'm going to go over the, the, the big picture story about how we manage imagery in ArcGIS. Uh, and then we're going to dive into some code. And, and Zoe's going to show you some cool demos on discovering imagery. Um, using Python. Um, so how many of you are using Mosaic data sets or are familiar with them? OK, half the room, a little more than half. Cool, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk a bit about that. Um, and uh, then we'll talk about how they tie to image services and how you can do stuff with them in REST. Um, so let's get started. So for those of you who don't know what a Mosaic data set is, um, it's, it's, our, it's our current data management structure for imagery. And you can think of it as a container. It's a, it's a large container um, that points to imagery on disk. So back in the day, we, we recommended everybody copy all their data into a geodatabase and manage it in a geodatabase. We don't do that anymore. Um, the only thing we store in the geodatabase at this point is the mosaic data set. And really all it is. Um, is some geometry, so geometry representing footprints, so footprints of the individual images, uh, boundary geometry, which represents the entire mosaic data set, um, a series of tables, um, only one that you can really interact with unless you're really digging in and doing some serious development. Um, it can be stored in enterprise or file geodatabase. The size is unlimited. Since we're not copying anything over, it, it's, it's unlimited. Uh, unless you're using personal geodatabase, which I don't think anybody's using anymore. Um, it's dynamic, so it's, it's, you put all your image, imagery in there, um, and it mosaics it dynamically. So it looks like a single seamless image at the end of the day. Um, but also, it's a catalog, so you can actually select individual images within that catalog. So it kind of does both. Um, what's great about it is it, it's ingestible into a GP tool as an entire image or as individual images. Um, and it's very portable. It's available through all of our, our web clients and all that. Um, the license requirement for creating a Mosaic data set but not, not viewing Mosaic data set is standard or advanced. So if you have a basic license, um, you can't edit Mosaic data sets. So <clears throat> in its most basic form, building a Mosaic data set is fairly simple. Um, you create a Mosaic data set in a geodatabase. Um, you add imagery. Um, and there's, there's this concept called um, a raster type. So a raster type is a pre-cooked template for different sensor types. So if you have Landsat data, we don't require you to do pre-processing anymore. You can just point to your folder full of Landsat data, choose the Landsat raster type, and it automatically does anything. It, it ingests all the key metadata and all that good stuff without you having to know anything about Landsat. So we have several of those. I think there's, I got this like 40 now, 40 of them, uh, ranging several different satellites. Um, so you can, ed you can interactively edit these in, in, in ArcMap. Um, you can, like I said, you can open tables. You can see each record representing each image in the table. Um, you can edit stuff in there. You can add metadata to individual things. You can add processes to them. I um, just want to go over raster products. So raster products and raster types are kind of synonymous in a sense. Um, the raster product is what you see if you go to our catalog. So this is a GOI raster product. Um, you can see the little sensor sitting over it. This thing's, this thing's constructed from just the metadata file in the folder. So if you look at the folder, you'll see all the bands as individual images, metadata files. Um, what ArcGIS does now is it goes and reads all that and creates this thing called a raster product. So you can see your multispectral, panchromatic, pan-sharpen. It does all this processing for you. You don't have to go and throw it into a GP tool and create uh, your pan-sharpen product anymore. It just does it for you. And the same thing happens when you ingest it into a mosaic data set with a raster type. So we'll create all those things for you. You don't have to go. You can just choose, OK, I want the pan sharpen product, and then it'll do it for you. You don't have to, you don't have to use any separate GP tools for that. Um, we also ingest key metadata. So if there's any metadata associated with the sensor in the sensor file, that gets ingested into the mosaic data set. 
um, and function templates. I just mentioned that. So um, all, all your different multispectral and pan sharpen products are in there. Um, so on top of the basic tools, we have several other tools. I'm not going to go over all of them, um, but there's stuff for um, defining no data. There's stuff you can use for building footprints. And the build footprints tool is usually used for clipping. So you can, if you have Landsat data, you typically have a big black collar. Um, you can actually run this build footprints tool and it will shave the collar off. It's not actually clipping it. It's not actually going through and running the clip tool and uploading a new raster. It's actually just, it's just reducing the size of the footprints to remove that black, the black collar. So at that point, you're just seeing the pure Landsat data and, and none of the no data. Um, you can do seam lining. You can do color balancing. And you can build overviews. And what an overview is is basically a pyramid. If you're familiar with pyramids, it's used, it's used for, for optimizing at larger scales. So it's a, it's a downsampled version of the original image at higher scales. So you can, it's, it's just used for optimizing when, when viewing on the web or just viewing in general. And all these tools, since they're all GP, they're all available through ArcPy. So um, you can do all the automating you want with it. And Zoe's going to show you a bit about that in a sec. So I'm going to switch it over to Zoe, and she's going to show you a quick demo on image discovery with Python and the GP tools. Is this mine? OK. Yeah. Thanks, Jimmy. So now let's get into some code to see how we could automate project dataset creation with Python. In the next following slides, I would first like to mention and highlight some of the useful ArcPy functions that could help you do the job. And then I will follow up with scripting demos. First, how to create a mosaic data set? Uh, there are two essential functions to help you create a mosaic data set. First, you want to create your mosaic data set in a geo database. To do that, you will use the ArcPy create mosaic data set management function. And then you will want to add your rasters. You can use the ArcPy add raster to mosaic data set management function. As you can notice, there's a raster type parameter here. As Jamie mentioned earlier, it is recommended that you know what type of sensor your data come from and you specify that in the raster type so that ArcMap will help you read the metadata correctly and pop up some of the metadata for you in the attribute table and generate raster products such as multispectrum pen sharpen automatically when you add your data. If you do not know what type of data you have or you want to find out in a scripting way automatically, you can do that. First, you can list all your rasters by using this ArcPy list rasters function. And, and then you can get properties from your raster by using this ArcPy get raster properties to get your sensor name. And then you can use the correct sensor name to add your rasters. After you have your mosaic dataset created, you can also create a derived mosaic dataset. What is a derived mosaic dataset? It is a new mosaic dataset that created from your existing mosaic datasets. It's a way to reorganize your data. For example, you have collections of imagery organized in different mosaic datasets, and you, you want to pull out some of the subset from each of the mosaic dataset to a new mosaic dataset for a specific project. You can do that by creating a derived mosaic dataset. After you have the derived mosaic dataset, you can set mosaic settings, modify some of the attributes, and do some editing and enhancement that won't affect your pre-existing mosaic datasets where you pulled your data from. The derived mosaic dataset will talk to your source image directly. To create a derived mosaic dataset, you will again use this ArcPy add raster to mosaic dataset management tool where you fit in your mosaic dataset you want to pull some energy from and then give a table raster type. Here I want to show where you can find the raster types this is the add raster to mosaic dataset tool open in ArcMap 10.5. You can see here are a list of supported raster types, and table is listed here. When you click this button, a little button here, it will bring up this raster type property page. And when you click Save As, it will save as a raster property setting file, which is in an ART.xml file. You can use Python to access and edit it when you add your raster to your mosaic dataset. Here is a quick example that I'm editing the raster type setting file, and I only want pen sharpen imagery when I add my data. 
Once you have your derived mosaic dataset created, you can, you can work on its attribute table. Uh, as you all know, here is the sample mosaic dataset. You have three layers, the boundary, the footprint, and image. The footprint um, layer is actually a table. When you open it up, um, it's pretty much uh, the same as the attribute table in feature class, but it has an extra field called raster. And you can, since it's a table, and you can use some archpy method to add field, join field, and do some query. Also, you can access this raster field and access individual raster item in your mosaic dataset and get some properties from a source image and pull that up in your attribute table if needed. After you have your derived mosaic dataset and you edit some of the attribute table uh, as needed, you can also do some optimizations such as define no data, build pyramids, and you can hear our old archive functions to help you do that. Uh, also, you can enhance, enhance some of the appearance of the, your mosaic data set by building seam lines, apply color corrections, and build overviews. So once you have your derived mosaic data set um, optimized and you want to publish and share with others later, and also you want to do live updates, <coughs> it's recommended that you use uh, enterprise geo database to store your mosaic data set so that uh, multiple users can access it at the same time. Also, it's recommended that you, you prepare your mosaic data set ahead of time. For example, you know your area of interest and uh, for your data, for your, all your data to come later, it's recommended you provide a larger boundary to cover all your data for the, when publishing your mosaic data set. But you can also uh, change the mosaic setting once published, but you, you will need to use this outer, outer mosaic data set schema tool. Um, even with this tool, there are still things that you cannot change once your mosaic data set is published, such as the number of bands, pixel type, cell size. So overall, it's recommended that you pre uh, prepare your mosaic data set before publishing. So next, let's get into some demos. Um, I have two demos here. First, first script will go through a folder, find all the rasters in the folder, create one mosaic data set, set for each type of rasters in your folder um, automatically. The next script will create a derived mosaic data set. So let's switch to ArcMap here. I have a scripting tool created for the first script. Here is my data oh, folder. Oh, it's not? Nope. Oops. Duplicate your screen. Where is it? There you go. Okay. So here I have my data folder. You can see there are different type of rasters. <coughs> what the script does, it will go through this folder, find what type of rasters you have automatically, and generate one mosaic data set for each type of ra your rasters. First, let's uh, give an output folder. Oh. Let's open up the script tool, feed in my data folder, and feed in my new folder I just created. Let's get it running. While the script is running, let's uh, go to the code behind. I will briefly talk about the code, but won't get into details. The code and slides will be available after the session. Or if you want, you can bring, bring your flash drive, and we will give you a copy. Uh, so really straightforward here, I, again, I mentioned this in the slides, I use the ArcPyList raster to find all my rasters in my folder. And then I use the ArcPy get raster properties to get the sensor name. Also, I can use the ArcPy describe function to find out if a data set has spatial reference. For data sets with unknown spatial reference, I excluded that, excluded that from my search. And then I create a file geodatabase to store my mosaic data set. And then I create mo my mosaic data set and add some rasters. For rasters that I, with unknown raster type, I create the mosaic data set for them using the raster data set raster type. 
So that's it. Let's switch back to ArcMap to see the result. As you can see, the script finds I have Landsat 7 data in my folder. I also have Icono and GOI. So it's creating mosaic data sets for, for them. OK, it's finished. So let's take a look at So I have four mosaic data sets created. Let's take a look at the GOI mosaic data set. Let's take a look at the attribute table here. As you can see, I have pen sharpen and multi-spectrum raster products added, and it specified GOI sensor, and it gets acquisition dates and NASMUs and other attributes sorted out for me um, pretty nicely. Also, let's take a look at the Icono tool. Again, pen sharpen, multi-spectrum, and all the other metadata. Next, what I want to do is that I want to use a script to create a derived mosaic data set from the two mosaic data sets I just created. I want to pull out pen sharpen and pen sharpen product from the GOI and Icono mosaic data set to a new derived mosaic data set. So let's do that. Let's get the script running here. <coughs> so first of all, I create a mosaic data set. And then I'm using a Python to edit my raster type setting file to include only the pen sharpen imagery. And you can see here, I first add my GOI mosaic data set and use the updated raster type uh, setting file to update only the pen sharpen product to my new mosaic data set. And then for, Geo, for Icono as well. Later on, I'm editing some of the fields to pull out some wavelength information for each raster item in my mosaic data set and write those information to the new columns I add to my attribute table. Here is just a way to show you can get raster properties from your source image and inject those information in your attribute table. After I modify the, rest of the attribute table, I then provide a new boundary since I will be sharing the mosaic data set later and add more data. You can use that by doing this arc by import mosaic data set geometry management and feed in a shapefile to update your boundary. And then set more properties for some enhancement. So it's building pyramids right now. Uh, the network is kind of slow today. OK, let it finish. So let's take a look at the result. I have my DRAM mosaic data set created. Let's take a look at the attribute table here. You can see I added only the pen sharpen products from my GOI and Econo imagery. And all the customized fields are being added for me as well. So now let's back to Jamie, and he will talk about how to uh, sharing image sharing and image services. Okay, thanks, Zoe. Um, so let's talk a little bit about image services and what they are. Um, we use image services to describe a few things. Um, most people today are referring to them as a published mosaic data set. So you have your mosaic data set all set up and ready to go, and you're ready to publish it. 
So that's what we typically refer to as an image service, although there's different versions of it. Um, so what can you do with it? You can use it for visual analysis. Um, you can also use it like a mosaic data set as a catalog. Um, and it can also be ingested in GP tools, just like a raster data set. So if you have an image service um, and you publish it, you can send it to people. They can use it in GP tools, just like any other raster data set. And you can also add, access it as a catalog. So it's still, you can turn that on and off as the publisher. Um, but you can still give people access to it as a catalog, so you can send it to them and they can browse it as a catalog. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit here about um, what other things we refer to as, 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 as image services. Um, you can publish a raster data set as an image service today. Um, it's, it's fairly static. I mean, you, can't, you can serve it out and people can access it, but that's mostly what you can do with it. Um, mosaic data sets are, I, I mentioned that. Um, the mosaic data set, if you're publishing mosaic data sets, you do need uh, the ArcJS server image extension, so it's a separate extension. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and you can do, you can also publish a, a raster mosaic layer. So if you create a layer file from those mosaic data sets or raster data sets, you can also publish those. And that, that, that remembers all the rendering. So if you have any cool rendering going on or any customized rendering going on with your, with your mosaic data sets, you can publish a layer file pointing to those mosaic data sets or raster data sets. Um, so how can you access an image service? So you can, you can access these image services uh, across the board. And all of our desktop applications, um, all of our web APIs, if you're like a JavaScript developer, Silverlight, um, it's all available on ArcGIS.com. Um, it's fully enabled for REST REST and SOAP, so you can do REST requests on it, and we'll talk about that a little later. Um, they're all open source compliant, so WMS, WCS, KML, um, and there are some third party applications that, that you can ingest these image services into, some of the people we've been working with over the years. Um, so publishing an image service uh, through desktop is pretty basic. Um, you can right click on it in catalog or the catalog window. Um, and hit share as image service. Um, you can also automate this, and Zoe's gonna talk a little bit about that. Um, before doing it, um, most people register their database and their folder storing their data. Um, there's, there's two ways you can do it. Um, you can actually publish a Mosaic data set as an image service and have all the data move to the server with it. Um, most people don't do that anymore. Most people have a separate data storage with all their imagery on it, and then they'll register that folder with ArcGIS server, and that way nothing gets copied over. Um, not to say that you can't do it, it just can be, I mean, if you're talking petabytes of data, that's a lot of data moving over to your server machine. So um, before, before publishing, we usually recommend that people register database and folder. Um, and this, and um, if, you're, if you're doing it through an automa automated workflow, this happens in the background, but it creates a service definition file. Um, if you're doing it through the UI, it does it for you. If you're automating it, you can write out these service definition files and you can automate publishing as well. <coughs> so I'm gonna hand it back over to Zoe and she's gonna show you how to uh, do live updating on an image service. Okay, thanks, Jimmy. So again, Let's get into some code to see how we could automate publishing and updating image service with Python. So there are, to share your image, uh, to share your mosaic data set as image service, there are several steps and they are very straightforward here. Uh, first of all, you need to create a server con connection file using the ArcMy mapping create JS server connection file. And then you will need to create a service definition draft. As Jimmy mentioned, it equivalent to the server editor window in ArcMap. When you right click your mosaic data set in the catalog window and click share as image service, it will bring up this server editor window and you can do all your configurations there. Here in Python, you will need to create this um, service definition file and you will do all your configurations here. Again, it is an XML file so that you can access through Python and edit it. Here is a quick example that I'm attaching a raster function template to my mosaic dataset. 
and I want to publish it together with my mosaic thesis. Later on, I will touch this. After you have your SSD file modified and configured, you can analyze the SP file and do some checkings and print out some messages by using this ArcPy mapping analyze for SD function. After you are satisfied with your SSD draft, you need to stage that to an SD file. So the SD file will, co will contain all your configurations. And then later on, you will upload this SD file to your server to finish, finish your publishing work. So let's jump into the demos. I have two scripting demos here. First, I want to show the publishing workflow to publish the derived mosaic data set that we created in the previous demo. And then I will do a li live update <coughs> on it. So switching back to ArcMap. No. Jamie? Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Okay. Sorry about that, her computer just for a host. So I guess I can jump back into. We have a backup video. Did you download it? We'll just wait for your computer to reboot. Okay. Sorry about that. Her computer just froze. Um, so I guess I'll talk a little bit about how this works. So um, in order to do this, in order to do these live updates, um, you need to have your mosaic data set in, a, in an enterprise geodatabase. And the reason for that is because um, a published service is kind of like a, a user. So the user is accessing this mosaic data set as, a, as, as an image service. So if you're trying to do live updates while it's published, um, it's required that, that you have a multi-user experience. Um, so because of that, the file geodatabase doesn't work for this. Most people will still use file geodatabase because Having live updates is not a, as big of a deal. They'll typically time it at a time of the night when no one's using their image service. Um, but there are there, there are still some entities out there that are that are actually doing these live updates, and they require like live updates daily. So um, if you're if you're heading down that road, then you're you're going to need to have your mosaic data set stored in an enterprise SD database. Are you ready? So I'm going to hand it back over to Zoe, and she's going to get back into her demo. OK. 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 Go ahead. <coughs> you're, still, you're still not on. OK. There you go.
So here, let's, let's show a, a demo that I recorded earlier with the publishing workflow. So here is our DRAM mosaic data set. As you can see, I have updated it before um, to have a big boundary for my later data to come in. And let's check the attribute table. So it has pen sharpen imagery from my GUI and Icono mosaic data sets. So now let's do the publish. I have a scripting tool created and specify your server name first, user and password, and drag in your mosaic data set you want to publish, give it a name. And as, as I edit my server definition draft file before, I can edit a raster function template to my mosaic data set while publishing. So while is publishing, let's get into the code to see. Maybe never mind. OK, let's just wait the script. It's completed. Let's refresh our server. And then we can see it's published. Let's drag in and have a look. So what is, you are seeing here is that you have a mosaic data set with your NDVI raster function applied. And you can switch back and forward to apply the function or choose not to apply it. So that's pretty much it with the publishing. So now let's show a live update. So here I drag in a SD mosaic data set that I published. It's again the pen sharpen imagery from Icono and GUI. And then I want to add my Lenset data mosaic data set that I created in the first demo to this mosaic data set. To live update, it's just one line of code. You will call the add raster to mosaic data set tool again and feed in your data that you want to add to your mosaic data set. So let's refresh the layer. You can see the Lenset 7 data is being, being added while the image service is serving. And refresh the, the web map. Is picking up the Lens 7 image as well. And let's check the mosaic data set attribute table. As you can see, here is the boundary that I provided earlier. And as you can see, uh, we have our Lens data added. OK, it's back to Jamie. <coughs> OK. So let's talk a little bit about um, the REST API. Um, we're, we're, current, we're, we're constantly adding new functionality to the REST API. Um, so now you can send REST requests to these published image services. Um, so you can do cool stuff like get information from the service. You can um, actually export images from your image services through REST. Um, you can do lock raster. So if you want to lock onto a specific raster, you can, you can do that and have that show up on top. Um, it fully supports compression. Um, you can request different rendering roles like uh, the topmost mosaic data set or, or the or, um, the upper right corner. You can do all that stuff. Um, when you're exporting, the only thing that that keeps the spatial reference is TIFF. Um, another thing you can now do is you can actually um, add functions. So Zoe showed you a, a mosaic data set with an NDVI function applied to it. Um, you can actually request, you can actually publish templates. So I have uh, a Landsat image service, and I want to add 
um, NDVI and a bunch of vegetation indices, and maybe I want to do pan sharpening. So you can actually have these as templates stored with your Mosaic data set and image service consequent, consequently, and you can actually access these through REST. So you can actually make a REST request and you can say, okay, I want to see the NDVI version of that. And it's fairly lightweight because it's just a template stored in an XML, so it just sits on top of your Mosaic data set, and you can access these very quickly. They all render on the fly, so there's no there's no wait time. It's not like a geoprocessing tool where you're outputting something and actually applies it in the area of interest that you're looking at. So if you're like zoomed way in on your your mosaic data set, it's not processing what's outside of the the, the AOI. It's only processing what the user's seeing. So they can they're, they're fairly portable and they're fairly fast. And that's kind of that's kind of what, what one of the biggest things that people are doing with REST and image services right now. And Zoe's going to show you um, how to do that that with Rust right now. I'm going to send it over to her. <coughs> so to make Rust request uh, with Python is. Uh, generally speaking, first you need to construct request in JSON, and then you can uh, submit request and get response with modules like URLib tool and request. Um, so let's jump into the demo to see how we can make REST requests for Python. Here I have. No. <sighs> So here I have my mosaic data set published and just left live updated before. And I want to send some requests to get some imagery. Let's zoom into an area. As you can see, mosaic data set is a way to organize your data. What you are seeing um, here, there might be overlapping rasters. So what I want to show in this demo is that I want to uh, get all the rasters with, within an area of interest in my mosaic data set. Here I'm clipping, drawing a clipping boundary. So I want to get all the mosaic data set in this area exported and also with a processing template applied to individual rasters. So what I expect to get are, will be the results of individual rasters in the mosaic data set in the area and with the NDVI function applied in this case. So let's get the tool running. So basically what the script does is that they first send a, a query request to get the raster item ID from the geometry information that I provided. And then it sends another request to export image with the raster ID also clip out that raster with the polygon that I draw. Let's refresh the output folder. As you can see, it finds two rasters in this location, and they are also exported with NDVI. And let's examine it further. Let's drag in the mosaic data set we have. Open up the footprint table. Do a spatial selection. As we can see, there are two areas, two images in this area, like the 23 and the 24 that I clipped it and exported using this group tool. Uh, I think that's all I want to show. Okay, okay so that's pretty much <coughs> all we have. Um, if you guys have any questions about Mosaic data sets or, or Python or managing data with Mosaic data sets, Feel free to ask. Yeah. Uh, those are using Yes, everything is, yeah. So the question was, can you do all this in Pro? And the answer is yes. Um, all these Python scripts are portable between Pro and 10. Yeah. Uh, the SE database, doesn't matter. 
Doesn't matter, as long as the ArcGIS server service can access that SD database. So if you're doing it over the network, um, most people create like a domain user. You'll have a, you'll, you'll, you'll notice when you have ArcGIS server running and you go on your Windows services, you'll see an ArcGIS server service running. You can actually log on to that service as a user and most people will create like a domain user that has access over the domain to that SD database and you can add that user to the SD database. So that way when the server's running and that service is running, the user logged into that can also get to that SD database as well. Any other questions? No? Okay, thanks. Thanks. If you guys want any of the scripts or anything, come on up and we can put it on a flash drive for you. You guys can play with it. Okay, thanks. Well, thank you.